an application I call Secret Note. So it has a table. I'm just using a FireDuck memory table here. This FireDuck memory table um, can be stored to a file. I'm, I'm just doing that. Of course, we could have used databases. We could have used REST services, whatever. But for the simplicity of that demonstration, I'm just using uh, a simple memory table. Um, the memory table we are using here has just three fields, a creation date, a title, and a node itself. So it's a very simple structure here, and I bound everything using the visual uh, designers. Um, and let's see what that is. OK, there are a couple of uh, elements that we just want to hide here, uh, like that one. So it's all. All visually, let me hide that one as well. All right, so we have basically our table here, creation day, title node, and we have a list of nodes, which is a T list view, and we have an edit for the title and a memo for the nodes. So this is all standard stuff. So here's the, um, the memo. Uh, somewhere behind that password uh, screen, there is an edit, and here is the list view. Very simple stuff. And next thing is when the application starts, we are presenting a login or basically just a password screen. I really made a very simple application here. So this is a T panel. It does have an edit for the password and an OK button, which does everything. To get the idea of what this does, let me start that in Windows. So target platform. 32-bit windows. Just let's run that application here. Very simple. Um, even though we are going to use um, uh, a technology which is meant to be used on iOS devices only, uh, for design purposes, you still can uh, run and try everything uh, on uh, Windows, on the Windows target. Let me see. I Broke something here. All right, I broke that one here. Yeah. It's all prepared already, and just let's run it again. Okay, here we go. So the application starts off, and very simple stuff. Before you can see any nodes, before you actually can go into the application, you have to enter a, an unknown password. Of course, you can make it much more nice than I have it here, but. In that case, I just enter secret as a password, hit the OK button, and here you see there are a couple of nodes already. I can um, uh, enter new nodes, some new stuff here, and I created the application in a way that it saves everything while typing, so it, it's not a save button or something. It's, it's made to work in a very similar way that you are used to use from um, mobile devices. So when I close that application, have taken here, it is the password again, enter, and you see node 4 is uh, here uh, again. So let's have a look at the Uh, well, in that case, I'm using the documents path, and the file name is notes.json. So obviously, I'm going to store everything in a JSON format. This is a little nice feature in, in FireDuck memory tables. It can use JSON, so we want to be modern here. Um, or um, handling application events. Uh, the application is created in a way on an iOS device when I send it to the background and it and get it back from the background, it will ask for the password again. That's something I have to use or I have to use application events for. We will see that later on. Okay, the next thing in the startup mechanism. mechanism is you're locking the nodes, which means well uh, basically display the uh, password screen and close the um, notes table. So in, in the case, the, the notes were actually already open, close them down so that the user cannot access notes 
uh, until he has authenticated by entering a password. So instead of asking for a password here, I'm requesting touch ID. I'm requesting a touch ID. So let's see what happens. Um, into the simple password. What handling so the user entered is secret. Well, of course, simple demonstration here. And in the case it's um, the right password, uh, we do unlock the notes. Unlocking notes means load the table with the notes and hide the uh, password panel. If the user entered the wrong password, well, we're just um, showing a message and set the focus again on the password. So this is traditional stuff. Now you have seen that we actually request a touch ID here. So requesting a touch ID is handled down here on defines here. Uh, conditional defines to make sure that this stuff is only executed on iOS devices. Remember um, the, um, the fingerprint sensor is only available on the actual device. It doesn't work in the simulator even. So you really need to run this on your device and not on the simulator. This is the reason why I'm not checking for iOS only, but also for CPU ARM, which means we are really running on the device here. Um, the code behind wouldn't actually run on, um, on the simulator it, or it wouldn't compile on the simulator because there are uh, libraries that only are available on the device. All right, so the main thing we need is a context. The LA context is what Apple provides. So we do a traditional alloc and wrap. Looks a little bit weird, um, but that standard way how to uh, create iOS uh, operating system objects. So th this gives us a L context, a context of the local authentication framework that Apple provides. And once we have that context, we can ask, can you evaluate a policy? So we are just checking, would the uh, fingerprint sensor work? And the only po uh, policy that we can check for is device owner authentication with biometrics, which means, well, is the fingerprint that is applied to the device, is that the owner of the device? That's the only policy that Apple currently implements. So is that policy available? That's basically what we are testing for here. Only if that policy or if, if we can evaluate that policy, then we continue. Why do we do that check? Well, even if you have a modern or a newer iPhone or iPad, with a fingerprint sensor, it might be deactivated. It might be that the user uh, did not um, enter any fingerprints yet. So we really have to check that it works. And for um, older devices, it will also tell us, well, there is no uh, working touch ID. So I'm just storing that Boolean value here, touch ID works. So if the touch ID works, then we can actually check for and present a fingerprint um, dialog. So this basically shows the uh, fingerprint uh, dialog on, on, on the device. So only, and, and this um, procedure does not return true or false. It requires you to enter a callback uh, procedure, which is this one here. So this is a callback. And this callback will be called once the user succeeded in applying his fingerprint to the device. So let's have a look into the, the um, callback. This is the callback. And the callback basically will get called by uh, the iOS operating system. We have a success or an error or end an error. So we basically check if there is no error 
and when the success is assigned, then let's see if the success is basically a one. So if if success is one, then the fingerprint that was applied by the user is actually a fingerprint that that authenticates the user as a device owner, and that's what we are looking for. So if we have success, then we unlock the nodes. Otherwise, we just say authentication failed and lock the nodes just to make sure that nothing is uh, uh, revealed um, without intention. And some of you might already have noticed something special here. This is very important. Um, this callback may not come from the main thread. It actually comes from the background thread. So it's very important because we are updating the user interface Unlock nodes would uh, hide the um, the password dialog dialog and lock nodes would actually show the password dialog and we might show a message. So we are definitely manipulating the user interface. For that reason, we have to call all this code in the main thread and thread dot synchronize is an easy way combined with a uh, anonymous um, procedure or method to make sure that all this code in this anonymous um, method will be called by the main thread. It's very important to do that. If you don't do that, it looks like it works, but it really doesn't. It, it wouldn't update uh, the uh, user interface in a proper way. You might even receive uh, access violations. All right. Down here is just some simple stuff about how the data is saved. Just, um, well, we have um, the memory table notes, save to file. You can specify JSON format. Um, we save everything after inserting a new node. And after every post, we do a save to file. And um, well, we have some keyboard handling for those who are interested. So the keyboard will pop up, and it will actually uh, move the content so that we can really see what we are typing. And down here we have finally some application event handling. So this is the uh, registration or the, the event handler for application events. Uh, I've shown you that in, in the uh, on create of the form. So if the application goes to the background, so the user hit the home button, then we are locking the nodes, which means when we're coming back, which is the will become foreground uh, event, then we should actually request a new touch ID, because otherwise the nodes will be locked. So this is uh, something you might have seen from banking applications or um, password storing applications like 1Password or so. Uh, all the time or every time you, you send your application to the back and bring it back up to the front, uh, it will re-ask for authentication just to make sure that nobody can steal your stuff. That's the, the idea behind that. All right. So finally, let's see how that works in a live demo. So we are switching back to... 32-bit simulator, and before I show that, uh, two things about uh, the wrapper. Uh, let's go up here. So we need those two files. This is the actual wrapper uh, unit. So this is what you get from that um, uh, Bitbucket URL. This is the wrapper for um, the lo local authentication framework. We just use that. And the other thing is, well, make API helpers. We need some helper stuff here. That's fine. Um, the only thing is this unit needs some extra work to actually um, be, to, to be able to use that. So we go to tools options, very important. And there you have the SDK manager. And we are working with iOS device 32 bits in that case. And we have frameworks here, frameworks. And this is what I added 
And sometimes this dialogue doesn't really store what you see. Uh, in my previous attempt to get all this working, I had the framework added and everything, but it, for some reason it didn't store it properly. So you have to make sure that you really have this entry down here, and to get that entry, you basically mark one of those previous entries here, say new, go here, library, frameworks, and enter local authentication. That's the name of the framework. And make sure that um, case, this is all case sensitive, that it's correct. Don't check any of the past types. Don't check anything here. And hit OK. I don't do that because I already have that. And then you should receive that single entry here. There's one additional step. The step is to go to Project Options because we added a custom framework. We have to let know the uh, linker that he actually has to use that uh, additional framework. And that way we go to Devi Compiler Linking. And here we add every framework that we added, well, on the custom, on the custom way. So just framework with a dash and then local authentication, that's all. That tells Linker to use what we basically entered in that SDK manager. Now we can, should be able to compile everything. It might take a moment or two, sometimes maybe even three moments. <laughs> um, it's of course, depending on the PA server, so I have a Mac in the background and, and um, there is my iPhone connected to the Mac and I have a PA server running which is currently deploying all the stuff to my iPhone and once uh, everything is running, we should be able to see my iPhone on the screen. To actually do that, um, there should be my reflector active. Takes a minute. Here we go. So, if you want to present your iPhone on, on a screen, you would need a sp special software. The software is called Reflector 2. Um, you, you might send me emails about that. Um, just look up in Google for Reflector 2. Reflector 2 is basically a, um, uh, it, 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 it's a, a tool that allows you to um, project iPhones on your Mac or even on Windows computers. So we see the application started. So it's, it's asking for a touch ID for secret nodes. And I am now applying my uh, fingerprint and you have seen uh, the password dialog, which was behind that screen, just um, went away. I can add a new note. Let's do the note for some, uh, something. Oops. Uh, there we go. Done. And note four is still there. And we can move between the notes. That all works. So. I'm just switching. And now I'm hitting the home button. You see the application is somewhere in the background. Uh, hitting the home button again, pulling it up, and you see the uh, touch ID is uh, re-requested. So every time the application goes to the back uh, and it comes back up to the front, um, the uh, fingerprint is re-acquired. Uh, All right. This is it. Um, source code will be available shortly on, on the website.